Church, happy Sunday. It is good to see all of you who are able to be here with us in person. If you're joining us online, we are delighted to have you with us this morning as well, and we hope that you will be able to join us in person soon. I'm the Reverend Sarah Schmidt Lee. I am one of the pastors here at the First Congregational Church in Kalamazoo, and I am sharing worship leadership this morning with our senior pastor, Mary Austin, and our liturgist, Paula Chomas. We also have some special music this morning, so we are delighted. Thank you for being here. The First Congregational Church in Kalamazoo is a member church in the United Church of Christ. And every time we gather together, we reaffirm that no matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. Hello, I'm Paula Chomas. Um, I've been coming to this church. I became a member this year. I've been coming on and off for a couple of years. And I um, also help with the video. And I, have a, I run a bipolar support group here for women. And I'm so proud of what I have done. It got on the um, 211 um, resource list for the county. This is my first time doing this. <laughs> so please be kind. <laughs> please rise and body your spirit as you are able to join in the call to worship. With nature in its power and beauty, with wind and rain and sunshine, with ancient rock and budding flower, With believers and seekers the whole world wide, with people in every land, and speakers of every language. With Jesus who promised his presence, with the Spirit who showers blessings, we gather in praise of God. Here many heaven and earth embrace. 
Let us worship God together. Please join me in the opening prayer. O oh God of heaven and earth, who is glorified in the wisdom of children, may we live with your humble heart within us. May we wonder what it might mean to feel our exhaustion and your love at the exact same time. May we consider all you've tried to show, give or say to us that we weren't ready for. Prepare our souls to yoke with yours, to share in the good news that revives every living thing. We ask this in your name and spirit. Amen. And now let us share Christ's peace with one another.
Are there any kids who would like to come up? Morning, Dahlia. Come on up. Since it's just you and me, you want to sit right here so you don't have to go so far? Have a seat here. Pastor Sarah will keep us company. No, not having it? You can stand there. Okay. <laughs> don't we all feel that way about church sometimes? <laughs> Dahlia is wise, and we appreciate that. <laughs> Let's, yes, the wisdom of children. We just said it in the prayer. Very wise, Dahlia. Let's do the blessing. Holy God, Holy God. we thank you for wise children. We thank you for wise children. And all that children teach us. And all that children teach us. Help us to be good learners. Help us to be good learners. And wise, listeners. and wise listeners. In Jesus' name. In Jesus name. Amen. Amen. And now for the scripture reading, Matthew 5, 22 to 24. But I tell you that everyone who is angry with sister or brother is subject to judgment. Anyone who says to sister or brother, I spit in your face, will be subject to the Sanhedrin, and anyone who vilifies them with name-calling will be subject to the fires of Gehenna. If you bring your gift to the altar and there remember that your sister or brother has a grudge against you, Leave your gift there at the altar. Go to the, be reconciled to them, and then come and offer your gift. Hear what the Spirit of God is saying to the church. And continuing the lessons that Jesus teaches about anger, the second scripture is from John chapter 2, verses 13 to 21. And in a moment, I'll invite you to think about the things that make you angry as we continue on our seven life-saving sins. Today is wrath or anger. Since it was almost the Jewish Passover, Jesus went up to Jerusalem. In the temple, he found people selling cattle, sheep, and pigeons, while money changers sat at their counters. Making a whip out of cords, Jesus drove them all out of the temple, even the cattle and sheep and overturned the tables of the money changers, scattering their coins. Then he faced the pigeon sellers. Take all this out of here. Stop turning God's house into a market. The disciples remembered the words of scripture. Zeal for your house consumes me. The temple authorities intervened and said, what sign can you show us to justify what you've done? Jesus answered, destroy this temple and in three days I will raise it up. They retorted, it has taken 46 years to build this temple and you're gonna raise it up in three days? But the temple he was speaking of was his body. Hear what the Spirit of God is saying to the church. Thanks be to God. All right, what's on the list of things that make you angry? It can be large or small. We are eager to hear what's on your list. I'm going to come to you. Who has something? Yes. Automated checkout lines. Automated <laughs> checkout lines. Not alone. Who else? Someone back here. Ah, uh, Warren. Mosquitoes. Mosquitoes. Excellent choice. What else? Bob, and then Christy, and then Sarah. Road construction in Kalamazoo. Here, here. Oh. Robo calls. Robo calls, yes. Rabbits inside the fenced area to keep them out. <laughs> 
grab people the being car. mean to you. What was that? People being mean to you. People being mean. Very wise. Sarah, I saw you. Oh, yes. Three putting. <laughs> Three putting. Three putting. Okay. Golf. Golf. There's a lot of rageful things in golf, I understand. The comment section of the City Kalam of Kalamazoo Facebook page. <laughs> Never read the comments. <laughs> Anybody else? We have a. Vi oh, Beth, yes. People who don't stop at stop signs. Oh. <laughs> People that blow through the stop sign. What else? It's an excellent list. Ah, Paula. People who throw things at bicyclists. Ooh. Rude. Anybody else? You have a nice list of things that make us mad. As we turn to the sermon, we hear Jesus saying, don't hold on to your anger and modeling for us how to be angry. He's threading for us a complicated path about anger, balancing don't hold on to your rage and be appropriately angry. And there are clearly times when we should be mad. All four Gospels tell us the story of Jesus pitching this fit in the temple. And our story, John, places it at the very beginning of his ministry. This is his big kickoff. The other Gospels have it at the end, and it means something different there. But when we talk about Jesus having a three-year ministry, it's because John counts three separate trips to Jerusalem for the Passover. And to kick off his ministry, Jesus chooses to go big in the place where all of the people believe that God lives, where they travel for pilgrimages, where they make their sacrifices. For hundreds of years, they found God here. And Jesus shows up on this day when people are selling things, buying things, getting the right animals for sacrifice. It's a little bit like when we go on vacation. We expect to find expensive souvenirs and overpriced t-shirts and postcards, and it's just part of the deal. We know it's going to be expensive, and we choose to do it anyway. But that, the other Gospels say that Jesus is mad about the overcharging. But here in John's Gospel, Bible scholars say that he's talking about the location of God, where God shows up making a case that God is no longer here in the temple, that the way to God is through him. God has left the building, as it were. And this is important enough to get mad, to pitch a fit, to get everybody's attention, to show the power of being angry. This is the good side of wrath. And for us, wrath is the most socially useful of all of the life-saving sins. An author I love, Leanne Davy, says that we should all be angry more, not less. She says we have a problem with anger because we don't get mad enough. We fear anger. We dread conflict. And so we hold back the conflict that we need to have in a healthy relationship or a healthy organization. She introduced me to the idea of conflict debt. We get into conflict debt when we don't have the small conversations, when we ignore the little things that tug at us. We avoid, postpone, evade, duck, dodge, and defer, she says, and the result is conflict debt. It's just like financial debt. It starts small. And when we don't address it, it piles up and grows and grows and grows, harder and harder to escape. Little amounts become big amounts. As Davy says, as with financial debt, conflict debt starts off innocently enough. An issue comes up, it's too hot to handle, you put it off. You promise yourself you'll revisit it. Then it grows in your mind. You lose the skills to talk about it. Days pass. No magic resolution materializes. And suddenly you're feeling anxious. 
burdened by this conflict debt. But anger makes us nervous. As women, we're socialized not to be too shrill, too harsh, too aggressive. People of color are trained not to be the angry black person. Poor people should be grateful and not too demanding. How often have we heard that LGBTQ plus people shouldn't flaunt who they are? As Midwesterners, we like to be nice. As church people, we really like to be nice. Anger doesn't feel nice. So if Jesus is our anger teacher, what does he have to teach us? He uses anger in two ways. The first is as a teacher to show us what's important. I really hate to admit this because I cherish mine, but our pet peeves might not be worth our anger. Christmas stuff in the store in July, people on their cell phones in public, the bad remake of your favorite movie, airplane delays. We might want to point our anger in another direction, because Jesus picks something really big, how we understand God. Anger teaches us to pay attention to where someone overlooks us, where they're using a microaggression, where they're crossing a boundary that we've set. It shows us where to see a pattern where to speak up, where we want to make a change. Author Brene Brown has famously said that most of us can only identify three emotions, happiness, sadness, anger. And in truth, I think we get anger and sadness confused. We act angry when we're actually sad, because it's easier to be mad than sad. It's worth digging down to see what the issue is. And we get to choose what we do with it. Some days we need to burn it all down. Other days we just need to remind someone to put their coffee cup in the dishwasher. Not everything is nuclear war. Our anger can also be about the big systemic issues around us. All of us who are paying attention to the world should be mad. Hateful rhetoric, political parties that prize division, hate speech, people crushed under medical debt, languishing in jail because they can't raise cash bail. All of it is worth our anger. And Jesus uses anger as a lever for change a way to move us toward a better world, either in our own lives or in the bigger world. Jesus, our anger teacher, is giving us a weird mystery gift, this way to see into our lives and to see where the world could be so much better. And he's teaching us when to hold on and when to let go. Anger is moving us into our deepest, wisest, most clear selves, and it moves us toward the God who longs for a just world. With thanks to Jesus for showing us this mystery gift, may we use it as he does. In his name, amen.
Good morning, church. I'm Lee Foley, the general ad oh, that's the wrong script. <laughs> Only Howard would get that one. <laughs> I'm Diane Roberts. I've been a member here for about 15 years and have been a part of the fabulous staff at the FCC for about 13 years. I stand before you today to give a brief moment for missions on behalf of your mission and social justice ministry team, of which I am a member and the liaison from the FCC staff. Our moment for missions this morning is about the United Church of Christ, the denomination of which this faith community is a proud member. The United Church of Christ is one of our mission partners, and you support it through your mission and social justice ministry team by budgeting $8,000 to support the work of the United Church of Christ, the Michigan Conference, and the Southwest Association of the Michigan Conference, UCC. The description in our budget is Our Church's Wider Mission, or OCWM. Some folks like to refer to it as Our Church Wants Money. <laughs> the fact, however, is these funds support international emergency relief efforts, members discerning a call to ministry, national and regional youth events, and work that the local conference, state, and national office does to connect congregations with resources to support stewardship, congregational vitality, and prophetic witness. The funds are also used to support General Synod, the biannual gathering of the UCC, where delegates, church leaders, visitors, and guests, and preachers gather to hear resolutions and recommendations of witness and justice from local churches, promote social and justice issues, elect the leadership of the church, and do the business of the church. General Synod also provides educational intensives, worship and fellowship to those gathered, inspirational prayer, and time for spiritual renewal and inspiration. This past week, General Synod was held in Indianapolis, Indiana, and I was privileged to attend as the recording secretary for the United Church of Christ General Synod and the Board of Directors of the United Church of Christ. It was a busy week with eight plenary sessions, 14 resolutions, elections, including the election of a new general minister and president, the Reverend Dr. Karen Georgia Thompson, who made history because she is the first black woman president of the UCC, and she's also from Jamaica. There were also apologies for wrongdoings of the past against people and cultures. For decades, UCC members have typically learned about four streams of traditions that formed our denomination. Congregational, Christian, Evangelical, and Reformed. But this year, the UCC recognized that there is a fifth stream, just as strong, that has not usually been named. The Church voted to recognize that fifth stream, the Afro-Christian tradition, as separate from and equal to the other four. And on Tuesday, the outgoing president and general minister, John Dorhauer, apologized for omitting, omitting the Afro-Christian tradition. If you'd like to learn more about the UCC, we have a new member meeting afterwards upstairs, and I'll be talking a little bit about what our denomination does. And you're invited to come. I promise we won't make you join if you don't want to, but at least you can come and hear a little bit more and have a good lunch. The most contentious moment motion was an amendment to the UCC bylaws to change General Synod from a two-year biennium to meeting every three years. It eventually passed by one vote, but I'm pretty sure we're going to be hearing more about that in the years to come. All of the resolutions that were bought, brought before the body were resolutions of witness, which means they are recommendations for the churches to read and to find ways to make a difference in local congregations. All of the resolutions are available online at ucc.org, and there is also a video of each of the plenaries. I invite you to take a look at all of them if you have time, but especially Guns to Gardens, a resolution providing practical ways for local churches to deal with the gun violence in our communities. Abortion as healthcare, solidarity, confinement, boarding schools, and public schools, which takes a stand for public school educators, academic freedom, and equity efforts in school. Doing justice, seeking peace, and building community are central to the identity of the United Church of Christ. Our actions to create and foster economic, environmental, and racial justice are rooted in the teachings of Scripture and the policies of our General Synod. 
A just world begins with justice. We commit to support and living practices that are grounded in justice within our congregations, communities, governing bodies, network partnerships, and beyond. When love becomes the lens through which we see the world, justice is possible. United in Christ's love, we seek justice for all. Thank you. Having received some, such gifts from God and through this church, this is our opportunity to wor in worship to offer thanks with gifts of our own. Please also take a moment to complete your connection card and put that in the offering basket as it comes your way. If you do not have time to complete it before the offering basket arrives, you may place it in one of the baskets at each of the exit as you leave. Both our finances and the sharing of our time and talents has outlined on the connection card. Help our ministries to be co continue to grow and be a blessing to God's beloved world. At this time, the ushers will please come forward to pass the baskets for our offerings. If you would like to give online, please your, use your phone to scan the QR code in the back of the bulletin. Thank you.
Loving God, we give you thanks for all of your gifts. We bring to you this morning gifts of gratitude and dedicate them to your work in the world through this congregation and through our denomination. We pray that the gifts we bring of our resources and energy and creativity and time might all be folded into your work of love and justice for our world. Amen. You may be seated. In our prayers this morning, we will be continuing to participate in the Southwest Association Prayer Project, and we will be remembering the church in St. Joseph, um, which is in a pastoral transition. Every week when we participate in this prayer project, we know that there is another congregation somewhere in the Southwest region of our conference that is holding us in prayer. Please join with me. God of love, on this day with sunshine, the ground still soft with rain, we give you thanks for our anger. and for what it teaches us. We pray for courage. Courage not to shy away from anger, but to allow it to bring us into those places where change needs to happen. Whether that's in relationships, where more respect is needed. Or whether it's into systems in our society where justice is required. Help us follow Jesus' lead. Let his anger Guide our anger. We give you thanks for the UCC and for the good work that has been done at the General Synod in the past week. We pray that we might be inspired to learn, to act, to live in new ways because of that work. And we pray for our siblings in St. Joseph. That you would also be guiding them, especially in this season when they are without a pastor. Raise up the right leaders bring wisdom, and bring peace in anxious times. God, we hold before you all of those loved ones in our own lives who are in need of special care. We pray for those expecting medical treatment, those who are recovering. We pray for all of those who struggle with mental health, and especially those who are impacted by the nationwide shortages of drugs that can help. We pray for those experiencing conflict in their homes or at work or in their neighborhood. We pray for courage to enter into that conflict 
seeking what is good and just and right. God, we hold before you these needs and so many others that we carry silently in our hearts. We bring them all to you because we believe that you care, that you are present, that you pay attention, and that through your power, good can come out of every difficult situation. It's with that confidence that we continue to pray those prayers that Jesus taught his disciples, saying together, Our Mother, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Good morning. My name is Christy Droppers, and I'm the moderator in this calendar year for First Congregational Church. Welcome, everybody. Um, I apologize. I'm going to be switching glasses. I had some eye surgery, and I don't see very well far with a lot of light, so I'm keeping them on while I talk to you this way until I need to look down. Um, just as a reminder for all our council members, there is no council meeting this week. Woohoo! Um, I know some of you have asked. It's it's freedom, um, but August sixth, with Pastor Mary's leadership, council is going to be doing a mini retreat following church, and I share this with you because we made a, a little shift in council and are putting our church calendar year to follow like the school year. Um, so it really begins in September. We're going to do a mini retreat to start thinking about what are the themes or the focus or goals or objectives, we're not going to label it, for our coming calendar year. And from those, the ministry teams will take that and create their own goals and objectives to support the overarching goals. But here's where you need to play a role. Talk to a council member or myself or Howard and share with us things that you might feel like we should be focused on, things that you feel like next year would be critical for a theme for our congregation so that we can add that to the thinking. I have two basic announcements, one of which kind of got forgotten, but um, believe it or not, we have a garden social following church, and I personally inviting every single one of you because it's at my house. <laughs> and I would love for you all to come. I have lemonade and cookies and watermelon and cherries and um, a garden that rabbits visit regularly um, that I'd love to share with you. If you don't know how to come to my house, there will be directions on the front desk so that you can find your way there. Come as soon as you can after church. The second announcement is we're going to be doing our second patio theology this coming Tuesday. And I really want to invite all members, but all people who are just visiting or checking us out or considering joining us. It's a great way to get to know 
other people in our congregation. There's time for talk. And it's going to be at Howard Teachma and Steve Kunzman's house. It's on the calendar. If you need directions, call the church. We'll help get you there. But I hope that you will all come. You might need to encourage to bring a folding chair, because if the weather holds, it should be lovely. Now I'm going to ask you to join me for the prayer of our church. As members of Christ's body and of one another, unique parts of a beloved whole, we give thanks for this gathering and for the one who gathers us. May our time together bind us in spirit, strengthen us for service, and help us reflect God's love in all we do. Amen. Please join together and rise in singing our closing hymn, Song of Hope, number 432. Friends, receive this blessing. Let us go forth, ready to love and serve our God in all that we do and with all that we are. May the grace of God, the love of Christ our brother, and the companionship of the Spirit be with you today and every day. Amen.